Hey, Troy, what's up, bud? Oh, nothing much. <laughs> well, you sound on top of the fucking world, mate. What's up, bud? Uh, there's a video here I think you should uh, check out. Why? Oh, just, just have a look. All right. People have actually said to me, are you mixed with something? You don't even look black. <laughs> well, you're not that black. You have pretty big eyes for an Asian person. Well, some Asians have smaller eyes. I mean, most of them have bigger eyes, but what has that got to do with this? Is that really your nose? What? I agree. What? White beauty standards are when whiteness is the default and it becomes the cultural ideal for beauty. White beauty standards in a predominantly white country would, would they not? Sorry girls, you only make up 20% of the population. In fact, you make up 10% of the population by you being 50% of 20%. It's called maths. It's usually a slim nose, having light skin, big eyes, long lashes, and hair that is the absolute opposite of mine. So... The fact that you live in a country that is predominantly white and some of these people actually have hair that is different to yours, you're upset by that. What's wild is that if you're white, you might not even see it because it's so pervasive. Well, yes, you wouldn't see it if it was so pervasive because it's everywhere, including the population. So this shade is nude. For white people. Spoiler alert, not all of us look like this when we're naked. That's right, because... You're not white! Ooh, nude colored stockings. For white people. I mean, not for me, but for somebody for sure. Yes, white people. So this is eyelid tape, or eye charm. Charming, because you can finally get those western eyes you've always wanted. So that's why your eyes look bigger than Asian people's. This is fair and lovely skin lightening cream. Look at how sad this lady is in the back. She's so sad that she's brown. First she was sad and dark skinned, and now she's scientifically more marketable. I don't think so. I think she's just basically putting on a pose that the photographer has asked her to do. I don't know what the f this is. Me neither. I'm a dude. We don't give a shit about any of this. Apparently if you use this, you can change your race. Like this is not a before and after. It really starts to make you feel like you don't belong. Like who you are is different and not acceptable. Different does not mean unacceptable. There's even a phrase within black communities called good hair. Good hair, this is a phrase in black communities. Why has this got anything to do with white people and the culture in which you are in? Yes, there's more white people than you. Get over yourself. And good hair is hair that is not kinky, not difficult to comb, and more closely mirrors the silky or soft hair of a white person. Yes, well, hair is actually somewhat unmanageable if it is all kinky and curly like that. My girlfriend has curly hair. It's actually quite difficult for her to comb it. There is absolutely nothing wrong with my natural hair. No, I don't think so either. And I remember when I was in college and I started my locks, my uncle told me that there was no way I was going to get a job. So your uncle is a bit of a shit. With my nappy hair. What's really messed up is I'm pretty sure he was trying to help me. That's a coincidence. What's pretty messed up is that you probably think you're trying to help as well. Isn't that weird? Maybe that gene got passed down. When I would interview, I'd always pull my hair back and then I would show up for my first day like this. So then I'd be like, take a picture of me just like this so this could be on my ID. What, so everyone could see your face? Even globally, white beauty standards are a huge thing. No, they're not. They're not. They're only a huge thing to you. If you travel to China, there's also just like white people on the billboards for like Chinese clothing lines, which is very weird. Yes, the Chinese are weird. Even in my own family, people would point out that my brother is like a little bit darker skinned than me. Why does that matter? If it was like a white family and one of the kids was Tanner, no one would give a crap about that. So your family sucks. And how do you know what white families are like? I have a family photo where it looks like they put the worst Instagram whitening filter on us and just turned it whiter and weirdly blurry.
So in this case, your family sucks at Instagram. You should see my mum on Skype. All right, now, if you don't believe me that white beauty standards are a thing, let's play a little game. Do a Google image search for a beautiful woman. Let's see here. Most naturally beautiful women. Let's have a look at that one. Oh, oh, it seems that the first lady on here has got darkish skin. That's weird. Then we've got another one with a with what seems to be sort of like spray on tan sort of makeup look about her. Isn't that odd? Have you ever been to a beauty salon? I'm sure you have. Have you ever seen one of these? For any of you who don't know what this is, this is a sunbed. Sunbed. It's for generally white people and those who haven't got a tan to get a tan to darken their skin. Some people are not comfortable within their own skin colour. Isn't that odd? And there's this one as well. This doesn't even use UV. This actually sprays you with it. Almost all of the ladies that you see on here, whether they be white or not, they generally seem to have somewhat tanned skin. You'd think that they'd want to palify. Oh, look, we've got somebody who would normally be bl uh, quite dark skinned, but they seem to have put on a lot of makeup to make themselves less so. It's as though women have a tendency to put on stuff that they are not. White woman, white woman behind a wall. We got blondes, we got brunettes. Takes a while, but you finally see a redhead. There really is still nobody. This is crazy. I see Jennifer Lopez. Does she count? I suspect she can count. Now, Google image search unprofessional hairstyle. Ooh, a significantly larger percentage of black ladies. And it's images of is my hair, my natural hair unprofessional? I like that one. I've had that one. And you know what, yeah? There's white women here too. With really long hair. Because you know what really long hair is? It's actually quite difficult when it comes to things like work. Because it can get in the way. We've got a gentleman here with really wacky beard hair. For some reason or another. Got all kinds. But as far as professional hair is concerned, what does that even mean to you? My God, what does it matter? Is this professional hair for a model? Is the professional hair for somebody who's basically maybe serving food? Or maybe an airline steward, for example, who have to keep their hair tied back in order to not get it in people's food or in people's faces? Your idea of professional is bizarre to me. You're talking about your choice of hair. You don't get to choose what your hair is, but you do get to choose how you dress it up. And if I've got somebody who's going to work and they've got their hair neatly tied back, whether it be sort of fuzzy or not, if they've got their hair neatly tied back out of the way, so I can see their face when they're talking to me, when other people can talk to you without them being disguised, why would it matter? But this is the thing, this matters to you. Another black woman, black woman, black woman, black woman. This girl's hair is really cute! The problem is that all of these social messages you get about what is and who is beautiful influences who you think is beautiful. No, you think that. I have longish hair right now. It would be considered, say, unprofessional. But if I was going to go to a job interview where I'm going to be working in heavy machinery, for example, I'd probably get a haircut. You know why? Because it makes it more easy for me to get the job. It's got nothing to do with messages. I've also got to make a point here that um, you're talking about the fact that your hair is, uh, you know, somehow unprofessional and it's not for, uh, for everybody. You are talking on a YouTube channel sponsored by MTV. Representation matters, and it matters because we can raise an entire generation of people who don't carry this cultural baggage with them. Yes, and you are carrying that cultural baggage with you by separating people out into these different colours and types. And then what you do is you say you all have to think the same because diversity. Well, that isn't diversity. Diversity of thought is something of diversity. And for me to be able to think the way that I think and you to be able to think the way that you think is perfectly okay. You're making mountains out of molehills.
Without representation, on a subconscious level, you don't think you matter as much. If it really takes the fact that you don't see yourself on TV, you are Indian, go to India, they're everywhere. And so we have to see different representations of beauty. Already do. And women of color. Already do. Womanhood. Already do. So that we can know that who we are is just fine. If that's all it takes, really, it takes that for you to know. Everybody else telling you what's what. So in other words, you have no agency. That's crazy. Let's search beautiful woman on Baidu, which is Chinese Google. Um, you know, it's still a lot of white women. Maybe you should maybe do the search in Chinese. All better now and then? I feel much better. How about you? I feel like I've just wasted 20 minutes of my life.